Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Open Knowledge Advanced Calculus course. My name is Jay Lee, and I'm the guide who will walk you through this interesting and enjoyable field of mathematics. As I have presented in the course introduction video, this course covers the more rigorous and more accurate discussion of calculus. In high school level of calculus, and even in early undergraduate level of calculus, most of the theorems and the logical conclusions are not given because they are considered too difficult. <clears throat> However, as long as we can think in a logical process and, in, and deduce from such process, the material is not too hard, but actually very interesting and mathematical, if you wish. Before I begin the lecture, I would first like to notify that the material of this course is primarily driven from Professor Choi Chang Sun's real analysis course in Kai Cyber Education Center for Talented Students. The material was modified with my, with, with my knowledge and solutions in this course. Now, let us begin the course. The first content we will cover is the axiom of real analysis. In this course, the methodology differs from that of high school calculus courses in that we, in that we first set axioms as truth we accept without objection, and then deduce all other theorems from those axioms. In high school courses, we accept theorems as truths, and either do not prove them or prove them in a flawed or less rigorous manner. To begin with, let us start from defining the concept of boundedness. Now, what is boundedness? We say that a subset A of set of all real numbers is bounded above. So this is the definition of bounded above bounded above if there exists a real number B that satisfies the following relationship. <clears throat> For all element X in A, X is less than or equal to B. So for all element in A, <clears throat> there, this inequality holds that so that uh, B, B is greater than all element of A. So why do we call this bounded above? If uh, why do we call uh, bounded above if this relationship uh, if <clears throat> this statement holds? So this becomes clear when we draw a number line. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't look like. Uh, a line, but okay. So let's say that this is a real number line. That's my second try. So let's say that there is this real number line, and this line uh, stands for all <clears throat> the set of all real numbers. So here's zero, and this and this line. <clears throat> uh, shows all your number in the set of all your numbers. So, what we say, uh, uh, what does this statement mean? So, if let's say that there is a subset A of <clears throat> of uh, real numbers. So, let's say that uh, this much of real numbers is called A. So. This uh, this subset of all real numbers is A. So then A is bounded above if there exists a real number B that for all, all x in A, like this number could be x, this number could be x, any x in A, the relationship x is uh, less than or equal to B holds. So B serves as a number that for for all number in A for all real number in A the B B is greater than that number so that serves like and that, that serves as the upper bound of A so no element in A could be greater than B so B 
B is sort of a upper bound. So A, A cannot overcome B and uh, have an element here because A, uh, for, for this number B, the, this statement holds. So that is what we, that is why we say that A is bounded above because A has a upper bound that does not allow any of the element of A to <clears throat> be greater than that value. And what we say, uh, uh, what we mean by the uh, statement that subset A of uh, all reals is bounded, that means that there is a lower bound also. So the concept, concept of bounded means that A is bounded above and simultaneously bounded below. Uh, you will, you could easily uh, <clears throat> deduce the uh, definition of bounded below from this statement. So if there is a real number C such that for all X in A, for each X in A, the relationship X is greater than or equal to C holds, then C serves as the lower lower bound for A, so no element in A could be less than C. So if A has both a upper bound and a lower bound, then A is both bounded above and bounded below. And that is what we mean when we say that A is bounded. So for for the next concept, let's move on for the concept concept and to the concept of minimum. So the concept of minimum follows from our discussion. Now what do we mean by minimum? What is the definition of minimum? A minimum, let's say u, a real number, is a minimum of set A which is not empty and a subset of real numbers. U is a minimum of A when you should, uh, the minimum of A should satisfy two, two conditions. So first, U must be a element of A And second, U must be a lower bound of A. So why do we call why do we call a number that satisfies these two equations a minimum? So let's again use our number line. So there was zero. This is the number line we would use. And there's our set A. Then, for our discussion of lower bound right before, uh, we said that lower bound is a number that, that has no element of A that is less than that value. So, if this, isn't, uh, this is a lower bound of A because no element of A is less than C, actually. Um, so, what we mean by uh, minimum is that U is first, it should be a lower bound. So, it must lie in the left of the set A. And at the same time, U must be a element of A. So U, U, U must lie on A. So U is a uh, lower bound that lies on A. So this is the definition of minimum. So U is the element of A, element of A that is, that satisfies for for all x and a, now we define this notation like this. Um, for <clears throat> for all x and a, the relationship uh, u u is less than x holds. So that means for for all element in A, the all elements are greater than U, and U is also an element of A when U is a minimum. So U is a minimum element. 
minimum element of A that is smaller, uh, that is less than or equal to all elements in A. So U serves as the minimum of A. So this definition should be intuitively, uh, <clears throat> intuitively correct. And it is. And also, it is easy to check that the minimum of A, if exists, it is actually unique. So how do we prove that? So this is the uh, first actual start of this course. We will prove, prove a mathematical statement from our definition. So proof. If minimum of A, now we will use this notation for the minimum of A. So if minimum of A exists, it is unique. Means that there's only one value that satisfies these two equations, if there is one. So how do we prove this? Um, the proof is actually uh, relatively easy. So let's say that <clears throat> is the method of contrafactual. So let's say that uh, the there is there are more than one. There are more than one minimums of a. So u and v are both minimum of a. Let's assume that. This is assumption. So what we would like to prove is that u equals v, so that uh, two there couldn't uh, two different uh, values of minimum of a could not exist because if two exists, they must be equal. So if we prove this statement, then <clears throat> we're proving that minimum of a is uh, unique if it exists. So how do we prove it? It's uh, actually easy. So um, since u is uh, minimum of a, u must be u must satisfy the condition too. So u must be uh, less than or equal to um, all element of a. But then since v is a minimum of a, v should satisfy the first equation. So v is actually an element of a. And since u is minimum, u should be less than or equal to all elements of a. So u should be less than or equal to v. And uh, and this uh, symmetric discussion holds for v also. So since v is a uh, minimum of a, v must be uh, smaller than uh, v must be less than or equal to all element in A. And since u is a minimum, u is an element of A, so v should be less than or equal to u as well. So since this inequality and this inequality holds, the logical conclusion we get is that u equals v. So we have proven this statement. So if if two different two different minimum of a uh, minima of a cannot exist. So if minimum of a exists, it is unique. So we have proved this statement. So now we could say that we understand the concept concept of minimum relative uh, pretty well. Now uh, try to check that. Oops, excuse me. Um, try to check the uh, the values of minimum for a, a known set so so that you could uh, <clears throat> you could be sure that you understand the uh, concept of minimum so uh, um, for example for this closed set closed interval from 0 to 1 what would be the minimum of this set so since uh, since the interval of real numbers is actually a subset of non-empty subset of uh, real numbers so it this uh, the closed interval from 0 to 1 satisfies the uh, our condition for a so uh, we want to check if the minimum of <clears throat> the closed interval uh, from 0 to 1 exists so uh, you would like to check this and try to check if 
minimum of this interval that is open at the side of 0 and closed at the side of 1. Uh, see if this see if this uh, value exists. So so I'll um, I'll not prove this to you, but you you would easily check that zero serves as the uh, minimum of this interval. But actually, there's no minimum uh, minimum for this set because um, try to check that uh, for for all uh, real numbers uh, u that satisfies condition two. It cannot be in this set because 0 is not the element of 0 comma 1 <coughs> the interval from 0 to two, 0 to 1 you, um, you'll be able to check that on all numbers that satisfy condition 2 does not satisfy condition 1 so that minimum of this interval does not exist so I'll leave this as an exercise try to check if you understand the concept of minimum using these exercises now, let's move on to the, <clears throat> the core material of this course, the first, ac first, first axiom of uh, real analysis. Now, let's move on to the core material of our course, the <clears throat> first axiom we will use in this, uh, in this advanced calculus course. The first axiom we would like to study is the orderness, the well-ordered principle of natural numbers. So, natural numbers, as you know, is the set of <coughs> natural numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, all, all those um, positive integers, if you wish. Uh, so, the, this is the first axiom we will use in this course. So what is well-orderedness of natural numbers? We discussed the concept, concept of bounded above and minimum to understand this uh, first axiom we will use. So this axiom states that for a non-empty subset of natural numbers, there exists There exists minimum of A. So from the example of um, minimum of uh, 0, uh, open, open at 0 and close to 1, from this interval, uh, we understand, uh, we know that uh, not all sets actually have minimums. But the well-orderedness of natural numbers states that for a non-empty subset of natural numbers, there always exists a minimum of that set. So this is an axiom, so we would not try to prove this. We accept this as a truth without objection. So throughout this course, we will we'll, uh, we'll never prove this. This is an axiom. This is... Uh, this is a truth we will use to prove other truths, the theorems uh, <clears throat> theorems we would like to use. So this axiom is the very first axiom that we will we will learn. So although we cannot prove this axiom, um, we could easily check like what this means. So for example, a set of 1, 2, and 3. This is a uh, non-empty subset of natural numbers. And, of course, there exists a uh, minimum of A, uh, which is 1. So 1 is, if, if we denote the set as A, 1 is obviously an element of A. And for all element of A, which is 1, 2, and 3, the, uh, since 1 is less than or equal to that, <coughs> Uh, those elements, uh, one serves as a lower bound, and therefore, one satisfies the two conditions that the uh, minimum should satisfy. So one becomes the minimum of A. So 
you could just uh, create infinitely many examples of this um, this principle since uh, non-empty subsets uh, subsets of uh, <clears throat> all natural numbers is actually infinitely many. So uh, I would like to prove that uh, actually this well orderness of natural number n is equivalent to mathematical induction. The method we will use throughout this course to prove many things. So if we if we assume this ax, uh, if we assume the well orderness of n, uh, the fact that uh, for non-empty subset of all natural numbers, there exists a minimum minimum of those subsets. If we assume this axiom, then we could derive the truthfulness of the mathematical induction. So, since we don't have much time, uh, let's <clears throat> uh, let's postpone the discussion of mathematical induction to the next lecture. And in the next lecture. Uh, we will learn what mathematical induction is, and we will try to prove it from the first axiom we learned. Thank you, and see you at the next lecture.